Now that we have the basics of our discrete random variables all set up, we are going to start talking about specific distributions within the discrete random variables. And the first one that we're going to talk about is the uniform distribution. And unbeknownst to you, we've already been talking about one of these, and one of them is our dice roll example. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let's set up one of our probability tables and we'll explain how this is a, um, a uniform distribution and also how we can leverage, if we know if it's uniform, we can actually take some shortcuts for calculating out um, the expected value, the um, variance, and also the standard deviation. Okay, so if we look at the outcomes for when we roll a dice, we can roll our one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we have here our PMF, our probability mass function, or the probability that of during our random event that any particular one of those outcomes occurs. All right, so with this guy, all we do is just one divided by six, one divided by six, one divided by six, one divided by six, and all the way down. Okay, so we know that this is uniform because it fulfills the requirement for a uniform distribution where all outcomes are equally likely to occur. Okay, so we can see how with our dice example, all of the outcomes, one through six, are uniformly distributed. They have the same outcome or the same probability uh, for every single outcome. Another way that we can see this is when we draw it on our graph. So if we draw our PDF, oh sorry, not our PDF, but if we draw our PMF, right, and we have this is like from zero to one for the probability that it's going to happen, and then we put something like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, when we do this, when we actually graph it, the other thing that we notice is that this uniform distribution, all of these posts come up to the same height. Or it's basically kind of this rectangle shape. It's uniform. Okay, so if we know that these guys are uniform, uh, we can skip ahead uh, when we are doing our expected value. So typically, you know, what we've done is we also put up here like our CDF, cumulative distribution function, one six, two six, three six, going on down. And then if we wanted to do the expected value, we also had to do this column of the outcome multiplied by its associated probability of success. And if we wanted to do the variance, we then had to also do the outcome minus the expected value or the mean squared times by its associated probability of success. And that took a while, right? I mean, it's not like terribly complicated calculations, but it can, you know, we got to go through a bunch of steps. Well, if it is uniform, we actually have some things that, that we know. In fact, if we know that it's uniform, we, do, we don't even have to be given the probability mass function because if it's uniform, we actually know what the probability mass function is. There's an equation for it. So let's start taking a look at some of these equations. So if it's uniform, the probability mass function so this guy, remember this is our PMF, probability mass function. That's just going to equal 1 divided by the number of outcomes. Simple as that. 
Because it's uniform, we knew that all these guys, if we added up all of them, they have to equal to 1. And so to get that equally distributed, you just take 1 divided by the total number of outcomes. We know what the PMF is. So that's nice. We know it's uniform. We automatically, we automatically know what the PMF is. As soon as we know what the PMF is, we know what the CDF is. So we would just then need to know like the, what the members of the support are uh, to do some of these calculations. But we can actually take a shortcut. So if we want to know our expected value of our random event, so in this case is of our dice roll, what we can do is, so this is equal to mu, all this is going to be is this b plus, oops, miss wrote there, b plus a divided by 2. And you're like, OK, wait a second. What's b and what's a? Now that's easy. So if we come over here, b is going to be your biggest number. It's your maximum. And a is equal to your minimum. OK, now there is one caveat to this. This little equation for the expected value, it only works if your uniform distribution is sequential. Like if it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's got to be sequential. If it's not sequential, this equation uh, doesn't work. So for example, if we had like 0, 4, 7, and 13, uh, this particular equation uh, kind of falls apart. Uh, and we'd have to go back to our original definition. But if it's sequential, this guy works out. So, and you're like, okay, well, we know that if when we did this expected value equation before, we got 3.5 for the expected value of a six sided dice. And if we do it now, we would have, just give this guy a shot, seven, right, because we've got six plus one, b plus a, six plus one, divided by two. And that equals 3.5. So you can see that it works. Once again, caveat, the uniform distribution would have to be completely sequential. OK, so that's nice. Now we don't have to do this whole extra column. We can just kick out our expected value by plugging in a couple of variables. Very nice. Uh, we can also do this with a with our variance equation. Now our variance equation is a little bit more complicated, but uh, it's a shortcut from having to do this guy because I mean, we got a whole bunch of calculations. All right, so for a variance, so for our variance of x. Now this is the first time that I've written variance like this with just a capital V. I write it like this a lot for just shorthand notation. All right, so our variance of x, that guy is going to be equal to, here we go. We've got b minus a plus 1 squared minus 1. And then we're going to divide that whole thing by the number 12. And you might be like, where is this coming from? How on earth are we getting here? And I'm going to say, just trust me on this one. We, we could go through the whole process of how to get to this point. But for our variance equation here, we're just going to say that this actually calculates out our variance. Now, if you are really skeptical of this, what we can do is we could go through, do this whole process of calculating out the variance using this equation. This always works. This is, a, this is foolproof. If you do this, we will calculate out the variance. And we could compare these two, and we'd see that the answers are, in fact, uh, the same. So, and then at the end, if we want to do the standard deviation, the only thing that we have to do, just like the other ones, is we take the square root of the variance. So this is kind of handy. We get to see how this uniform distribution, if we know that a discrete random variable is, in fact, uniform, we get some additional knowledge, and we get to take a couple of shortcuts.